and Nasir Salah ad Din Yusuf ibn Ayyub Arabic, Salah al Din Yusuf bin Ayyub Allah LC, Salah ad Din Yusuf ibn Ayyub, Kurdish, Sladini Yurbi Allah LC, Salahedin Ayyubai, known as Salah ad Din or Saladin, 1137 to 4 March 1193, was the first Sultan of Egypt and Syria and the founder of the Ayyubid dynasty. A Sunni Muslim of Kurdish ethnicity, Saladin led the Muslim military campaign against the Crusader states in the Levant. At the height of his power, his sultanate included Egypt, Syria, Upper Mesopotamia, the Hejaz, Yemen and other parts of North Africa. He was originally sent to Fatimid Egypt in 1164 accompanying his uncle Shirka, a general of the Zenjid army, on orders of their lord Nur ad-Din, an Atabeg of the Seljuks, to consolidate Shawar amid his ongoing power struggle for vizier to the teenage Fatimid caliph al-Adid. With Shawar reinstated as vizier, he engaged in a power struggle with Shirka, which saw the former realigning himself with crusader king Amalric. Saladin climbed the ranks of the Fatimid government by virtue of his military successes against crusader assaults against its territory and his personal closeness to al-Adid. With Shawar assassinated in 1169 and Shirku's natural death later that year, al-Adid appointed Saladin vizier, a rare nomination of a Sunni Muslim to such an important position in the Ismaili Shia Caliphate. During his tenure as vizier, Saladin began to undermine the Fatimid establishment and, following al-Adid's death in 1171, he abolished the Fatimid Caliphate and realigned the country's allegiance with the Sunni, Baghdad-based Abbasid Caliphate. In the following years, he led forays against the Crusaders in Palestine, commissioned the successful conquest of Yemen, and staved off pro-Fatimid rebellions in Upper Egypt. Not long after Nur ad-Din's death in 1174, Saladin launched his conquest of Syria, peacefully entering Damascus at the request of its governor. By mid-1175, Saladin had conquered Hama and Homs, inviting the animosity of other Zenjid lords, the official rulers of Syria's various regions. Soon after, he defeated the Zenjid army at the Battle of the Horns of Hama and was thereafter proclaimed the Sultan of Egypt and Syria by the Abbasid Caliph al-Mastadi. Saladin made further conquests in northern Syria and Jazeera, escaping two attempts on his life by the assassins before returning to Egypt in 1177 to address issues there. By 1182, Saladin had completed the conquest of Muslim Syria after capturing Aleppo, but ultimately failed to take over the Zenjid stronghold of Mosul. Under Saladin's command, the Ayyubid army defeated the Crusaders at the decisive Battle of Hattin in 1187, and thereafter wrested control of Palestine, including the city of Jerusalem, from the Crusaders, who had conquered the area 88 years earlier. Although the Crusader Kingdom of Jerusalem continued to exist until the late 13th century, its defeat at Hattin marked a turning point in its conflict with the Muslim powers of the region. Saladin died in Damascus in 1193, having given away much of his personal wealth to his subjects. He is buried in a mausoleum adjacent to the Umayyad Mosque. Saladin has become a prominent figure in Muslim, Arab, Turkish and Kurdish culture, and he has often been described as being the most famous Kurd in history. Early life Saladin was born in Tikrit in modern-day Iraq. His personal name was Yusuf. Salah ad-Din is a lakab, an honorific epithet, meaning righteousness of the faith. His family was of Kurdish ancestry, and had originated from the city of Dvin in central Armenia. The Rawadiya tribe he hailed from had been partially assimilated into the Arabic-speaking world by this time. In 1132, the defeated army of Imad ad-Din Zenji, the ruler of Mosul, found their retreat blocked by the Tigris River opposite the fortress of Tikrit, where Saladin's father, Najm ad-Din Ayyub served as the warden. Ayyub provided ferries for the army and gave them refuge in Tikrit. Mujahed al-Din Biruz, a former Greek slave who had been appointed as the military governor of northern Mesopotamia for his service to the Seljuks, reprimanded Ayyub for giving Zenji refuge and in 1137 banished Ayyub from Tikrit after his brother Asad al-Din Shirka killed a friend of Biruz in an honor killing. According to Baha ad-Din ibn Shaddad, Saladin was born on the same night that his family left Tikrit. In 1139, Ayyub and his family moved to Mosul, where Imad ad-Din Zenji acknowledged his debt and appointed Ayyub commander of his fortress in Baalbek. 
After the death of Zengi in 1146, his son, Nur ad Din, became the regent of Aleppo and the leader of the Zenjids. Saladin, who now lived in Damascus, was reported to have a particular fondness for the city, but information on his early childhood is scarce. About education, Saladin wrote, Children are brought up in the way in which their elders were brought up. According to his biographers, Anne-Marie Ede and Al-Warani, Saladin was able to answer questions on Euclid, the Almagest, arithmetic, and law, but this was an academic ideal and it was study of the Quran and the sciences of religion that linked him to his contemporaries. Several sources claim that during his studies he was more interested in religion than joining the military. Another factor which may have affected his interest in religion was that, during the First Crusade, Jerusalem was taken by the Christians. In addition to Islam, Saladin had a knowledge of the genealogies, biographies, and histories of the Arabs, as well as the bloodlines of Arabian horses. More significantly, he knew the Hamasa of Abu Tamim by heart. He spoke Kurdish and Arabic. <laughs> Early expeditions Saladin's military career began under the tutelage of his uncle Asad al-Din Shirka, a prominent military commander under Nur ad-Din, the Zenjid emir of Damascus and Aleppo and the most influential teacher of Saladin. In 1163, the vizier to the Fatimid caliph al-Adid, Shawar, had been driven out of Egypt by his rival Durgham, a member of the powerful Banu Razayak tribe. He asked for military backing from Nur ad-Din, who complied and, in 1164, sent Shirka to aid Shawar in his expedition against Durgham. Saladin, at age 26, went along with them. After Shawar was successfully reinstated as vizier, he demanded that Shirka withdraw his army from Egypt for a sum of 30,000 gold dinars, but he refused, insisting it was Nur ad-Din's will that he remain. Saladin's role in this expedition was minor, and it is known that he was ordered by Shirka to collect stores from Bilbay prior to its siege by a combined force of Crusaders and Shah's troops. After the sacking of Bilbay, the Crusader Egyptian force and Shirku's army were to engage in a battle on the desert border of the River Nile, just west of Giza. Saladin played a major role, commanding the right wing of the Zenjid army, while a force of Kurds commanded the left, and Shirka was stationed in the center. Muslim sources at the time, however, put Saladin in the baggage of the center, with orders to lure the enemy into a trap by staging a feigned retreat. The Crusader force enjoyed early success against Shirku's troops, but the terrain was too steep and sandy for their horses, and Commander Hugh of Caesarea was captured while attacking Saladin's unit. After scattered fighting in little valleys to the south of the main position, the Zenjid central force returned to the offensive, Saladin joined in from the rear, the battle ended in a Zenjid victory, and Saladin is credited with having helped Shirka in one of the most remarkable victories in recorded history. According to Ibn al-Athir, although more of Shirku's men were killed and the battle is considered by most sources as not a total victory. Saladin and Shirka moved towards Alexandria where they were welcomed, given money, arms and provided a base. Faced by a superior crusader Egyptian force attempting to besiege the city, Shirka split his army. He and the bulk of his force withdrew from Alexandria, while Saladin was left with the task of guarding the city. In Egypt Vizier of Egypt Shirka was in a power struggle over Egypt with Shawar and Amalric I of the Kingdom of Jerusalem, in which Shawar requested Amalric's assistance. In 1169, Shawar was reportedly assassinated by Saladin, and Shirka died later that year. Nur ad-Din chose a successor for Shirka, but al-Adid appointed Saladin to replace Shawar as vizier. The reasoning behind the Shia caliph al-Adid's selection of Saladin, a Sunni, varies. Ibn al-Athir claims that the caliph chose him after being told by his advisors that there is no one weaker or younger than Saladin, and not one of the emirs commanders obeyed him or served him. However, according to this version, after some bargaining, he was eventually accepted by the majority of the emirs. Al-Adid's advisors were also suspected of promoting Saladin in an attempt to split the Syria-based Zenjids. Al-Warani wrote that Saladin was selected because of the reputation of his family in their generosity and military prowess. Imad ad-Din wrote that after the brief mourning period for Shirka, during which opinions differed, the Zenjid emirs decided upon Saladin and forced the caliph to 
invest him as vizier. Although positions were complicated by rival Muslim leaders, the bulk of the Syrian commanders supported Saladin because of his role in the Egyptian expedition, in which he gained a record of military qualifications. Inaugurated as vizier on the 26th of March, Saladin repented wine drinking and turned from frivolity to assume the dress of religion. According to Arabic sources of the time, having gained more power and independence than ever before in his career, he still faced the issue of ultimate loyalty between al-Adid and Nur ad-Din. Later in the year, a group of Egyptian soldiers and emirs attempted to assassinate Saladin, but having already known of their intentions thanks to his intelligence chief Ali ibn Safian, he had the chief conspirator, Naji, Mudaman al-Khilafa, the civilian controller of the Fatimid palace, arrested and killed. The day after, 50,000 black African soldiers from the regiments of the Fatimid army opposed to Saladin's rule, along with a number of Egyptian emirs and commoners, staged a revolt. By 23 August, Saladin had decisively quelled the uprising, and never again had to face a military challenge from Cairo. Towards the end of 1169, Saladin, with reinforcements from Nur ad Din, defeated a massive Crusader Byzantine force near Damietta. Afterward, in the spring of 1170, Nur ad Din sent Saladin's father to Egypt in compliance with Saladin's request, as well as encouragement from the Baghdad based Abbasid Caliph, al Mustanjid, who aimed to pressure Saladin in deposing his rival Caliph, al Adid. Saladin himself had been strengthening his hold on Egypt and widening his support base there. He began granting his family members high-ranking positions in the region, he ordered the construction of a college for the Maliki branch of Sunni Islam in the city, as well as one for the Shafi'i denomination to which he belonged in al-Fustat. After establishing himself in Egypt, Saladin launched a campaign against the Crusaders, besieging Darum in 1170. Amalric withdrew his Templar garrison from Gaza to assist him in defending Darum, but Saladin evaded their force and fell on Gaza instead. He destroyed the town built outside the city's castle and killed most of its inhabitants after they were refused entry into the castle. It is unclear exactly when, but during that same year, he attacked and captured the Crusader castle of Eilat, built on an island off the head of the Gulf of Aqaba. It did not pose a threat to the passage of the Muslim navy, but could harass smaller parties of Muslim ships and Saladin decided to clear it from his path. Topic. Sultan of Egypt. According to Imad ad-Din, Nur ad-Din wrote to Saladin in June 1171, telling him to re-establish the Abbasid Caliphate in Egypt, which Saladin coordinated two months later after additional encouragement by Najm ad-Din al-Kabushani, the Shafi'i Faqih, who vehemently opposed Shia rule in the country. Several Egyptian emirs were thus killed, but al-Adid was told that they were killed for rebelling against him. He then fell ill, or was poisoned according to one account. While ill, he asked Saladin to pay him a visit to request that he take care of his young children, but Saladin refused, fearing treachery against the Abbasids, and is said to have regretted his action after realizing what al-Adid had wanted. He died on 13 September, and five days later, the Abbasid Qutba was pronounced in Cairo and al-Fustat, proclaiming al-Mustadi as caliph. On 25 September, Saladin left Cairo to take part in a joint attack on Curic and Montreal, the desert castles of the Kingdom of Jerusalem, with Nur ad-Din who would attack from Syria. Prior to arriving at Montreal, Saladin however withdrew back to Cairo as he received the reports that in his absence the Crusader leaders had increased their support to the traitors inside Egypt to attack Saladin from within and lessen his power especially the Fatimid who started plotting to restore their past glory. Because of this, Nur ad-Din went on alone. During the summer of 1173, a Nubian army along with a contingent of Armenian refugees were reported on the Egyptian border, preparing for a siege against Aswan. The emir of the city had requested Saladin's assistance and was given reinforcements under Turan Shah, Saladin's brother. Consequently, the Nubians departed, but returned in 1173 and were again driven off. This time, Egyptian forces advanced from Aswan and captured the Nubian town of Ibrahim. Saladin sent a gift to Nur ad-Din, who had been his friend and teacher, 60,000 dinars, wonderful manufactured goods, some jewels, and an elephant. While transporting these goods to Damascus, Saladin took the opportunity to ravage the Crusader countryside. 
He did not press an attack against the desert castles, but attempted to drive out the Muslim Bedouin who lived in Crusader territory with the aim of depriving the Franks of guides. On the 31st of July 1173, Saladin's father Ayyub was wounded in a horse riding accident, ultimately causing his death on the 9th of August. In 1174, Saladin sent Turan Shah to conquer Yemen to allocate it and its port Aden to the territories of the Ayyubid dynasty. Topic. Conquest of Syria Topic. Conquest of Damascus In the early summer of 1174, Nur ad-Din was mustering an army, sending summons to Mosul, Diyar Bakr, and the Jazeera in an apparent preparation of attack against Saladin's Egypt. The Ayyubids held a council upon the revelation of these preparations to discuss the possible threat and Saladin collected his own troops outside Cairo. On 15 May, Nur ad-Din died after falling ill the previous week and his power was handed to his 11-year-old son as Salah Ismail al-Malik. His death left Saladin with political independence and in a letter to as Salah, he promised to act as a sword against his enemies and referred to the death of his father as an earthquake shock. In the wake of Nur ad-Din's death, Saladin faced a difficult decision, he could move his army against the Crusaders from Egypt or wait until invited by As-Sala in Syria to come to his aid and launch a war from there. He could also take it upon himself to annex Syria before it could possibly fall into the hands of a rival, but he feared that attacking a land that formerly belonged to his master—forbidden in the Islamic principles in which he believed—could portray him as hypocritical, thus making him unsuitable for leading the war against the Crusaders. Saladin saw that in order to acquire Syria, he either needed an invitation from as Salah, or to warn him that potential anarchy could give rise to danger from the Crusaders. When as Salah was removed to Aleppo in August, Gumushtigan, the emir of the city and a captain of Nur ad Din's veterans, assumed the guardianship over him. The emir prepared to unseat all his rivals in Syria and the Jazeera, beginning with Damascus. In this emergency, the emir of Damascus appealed to Saif al-Din of Mosul a cousin of for assistance against Aleppo, but he refused, forcing the Syrians to request the aid of Saladin, who complied. Saladin rode across the desert with 700 picked horsemen, passing through al Kurak, then reaching Basra. According to his own account, was joined by emirs, soldiers, and Bedouin, the emotions of their hearts to be seen on their faces. On 23 November, he arrived in Damascus amid general acclamation and rested at his father's old home there, until the gates of the citadel of Damascus, whose commander Ryan initially refused to surrender, were opened to Saladin four days later, after a brief siege by his brother Tutakan ibn Ayyub. He installed himself in the castle and received the homage and salutations of the inhabitants. Topic. Further conquests in Syria Leaving his brother Tutigan as governor of Damascus, Saladin proceeded to reduce other cities that had belonged to Nur al-Din, but were now practically independent. His army conquered Hama with relative ease, but avoided attacking Homs because of the strength of its citadel. Saladin moved north towards Aleppo, besieging it on 30 December after Gumushtigan refused to abdicate his throne. As Salah, fearing capture by Saladin, came out of his palace and appealed to the inhabitants not to surrender him and the city to the invading force. One of Saladin's chroniclers claimed, The people came under his spell. Gumushtigan requested Rashid ad Din Sinan, Grand Master of the Assassins of Syria, who were already at odds with Saladin since he replaced the Fatimids of Egypt, to assassinate Saladin in his camp. On the 11th of May 1175, a group of 13 assassins easily gained admission into Saladin's camp, but were detected immediately before they carried out their attack by Nasi al-Din Kumertekin of Abu Qubais. One was killed by one of Saladin's generals and the others were slain while trying to escape. To deter Saladin's progress, Raymond of Tripoli gathered his forces by Nahr al-Kabir, where they were well placed for an attack on Muslim territory. Saladin later moved toward Homs instead, but retreated after being told a relief force was being sent to the city by Saif al-Din. Meanwhile, Saladin's rivals in Syria and Jazeera waged a propaganda war against him, claiming he had forgotten his own condition, servant of Nur ad-Din, and showed no gratitude for his old master by besieging his son, rising in rebellion against his lord. 
Saladin aimed to counter this propaganda by ending the siege, claiming that he was defending Islam from the Crusaders. His army returned to Hama to engage a Crusader force there. The Crusaders withdrew beforehand and Saladin proclaimed it, a victory opening the gates of men's hearts. Soon after, Saladin entered Homs and captured its citadel in March 1175. After stubborn resistance from its defenders, Saladin's successes alarmed Saif al Din. As head of the Zenjids, including Gumushtigan, he regarded Syria and Mesopotamia as his family estate and was angered when Saladin attempted to usurp his dynasty's holdings. Saif al Din mustered a large army and dispatched it to Aleppo, whose defenders anxiously had awaited them. The combined forces of Mosul and Aleppo marched against Saladin in Hama. Heavily outnumbered, Saladin initially attempted to make terms with the Zenjids by abandoning all conquests north of the Damascus province, but they refused, insisting he return to Egypt. Seeing that confrontation was unavoidable, Saladin prepared for battle, taking up a superior position at the Horns of Hama, hills by the gorge of the Orontes River. On 13 April 1175, the Zenjid troops marched to attack his forces, but soon found themselves surrounded by Saladin's Ayyubid veterans, who crushed them. The battle ended in a decisive victory for Saladin, who pursued the Zenjid fugitives to the gates of Aleppo, forcing as Salah's advisors to recognize Saladin's control of the provinces of Damascus, Homs, and Hama, as well as a number of towns outside Aleppo, such as Ma'arat al Numan. After his victory against the Zenjids, Saladin proclaimed himself king and suppressed the name of as Salah in Friday prayers and Islamic coinage. From then on, he ordered prayers in all the mosques of Syria and Egypt as the sovereign king and he issued at the Cairo mint gold coins bearing his official title Al Malik and Nasir Yusuf Ayyub, Allah Ghaya, the king strong to aid, Joseph son of Job, exalted be the standard. The Abbasid Caliph in Baghdad graciously welcomed Saladin's assumption of power and declared him Sultan of Egypt and Syria. The Battle of Hama did not end the contest for power between the Ayyubids and the Zenjids, with the final confrontation occurring in the spring of 1176. Saladin had gathered massive reinforcements from Egypt while Saif al-Din was levying troops among the minor states of Diyarbakir and al-Jazeera. When Saladin crossed the Orontes, leaving Hama, the sun was eclipsed. He viewed this as an omen, but he continued his march north. He reached the Sultan's Mound, c. 25 kilometers from Aleppo, where his forces encountered Saif al-Din's army. A hand-to-hand -hand fight ensued and the Zenjids managed to plow Saladin's left wing, driving it before him, when Saladin himself charged at the head of the Zenjid guard. The Zenjid forces panicked and most of Saif al-Din's officers ended up being killed or captured. Saif al-Din narrowly escaped. The Zenjid army's camp, horses, baggage, tents and stores were seized by the Ayyubids. The Zenjid prisoners of war, however, were given gifts and freed. All of the booty from the Ayyubid victory was accorded to the army, Saladin not keeping anything himself, he continued towards Aleppo, which still closed its gates to him, halting before the city. On the way, his army took Baza'a, then captured Manbij. From there, they headed west to besiege the fortress of Aziz on 15 May. Several days later, while Saladin was resting in one of his captain's tents, an assassin rushed forward at him and struck at his head with a knife. The cap of his head armor was not penetrated and he managed to grip the assassin's hand—the dagger only slashing his gambeson—and the assailant was soon killed. Saladin was unnerved at the attempt on his life, which he accused Gumushtugan and the assassins of plotting, and so increased his efforts in the siege. Aziz capitulated on 21 June, and Saladin then hurried his forces to Aleppo to punish Gumushtugan. His assaults were again resisted, but he managed to secure not only a truce, but a mutual alliance with Aleppo, in which Gumushtugan and as Salah were allowed to continue their hold on the city and in return, they recognized Saladin as the sovereign over all of the dominions he conquered. The emirs of Mardin and Kifa, the Muslim allies of Aleppo, also recognized Saladin as the king of Syria. When the treaty was concluded, the younger sister of Asala came to Saladin and requested the return of the fortress of Aziz. He complied and escorted her back to the gates of Aleppo with numerous presents. <laughs> <laughs> Campaign against the assassins Saladin had by now agreed truces with his Zenjid rivals and the Kingdom of Jerusalem the latter occurred in the summer of 1175, but faced a threat from the Ismaili sect known as the ''Assassins'' led by Rashid ad-Din Sinan. 
Based in the Anusayaraya Mountains, they commanded nine fortresses, all built on high elevations. As soon as he dispatched the bulk of his troops to Egypt, Saladin led his army into the Anusayaraya Range in August 1176. He retreated the same month, after laying waste to the countryside, but failing to conquer any of the forts. Most Muslim historians claim that Saladin's uncle, the governor of Hama, mediated a peace agreement between him and Sinan. Saladin had his guards supplied with link lights and had chalk and cinders strewed around his tent outside Masayaf, which he was besieging, to detect any footsteps by the assassins. According to this version, one night Saladin's guards noticed a spark glowing down the hill of Masayaf and then vanishing among the Ayyubid tents. Presently, Saladin awoke to find a figure leaving the tent. He saw that the lamps were displaced and beside his bed laid hot scones of the shape peculiar to the assassins with a note at the top pinned by a poisoned dagger. The note threatened that he would be killed if he didn't withdraw from his assault. Saladin gave a loud cry, exclaiming that Sinan himself was the figure that had left the tent. Another version claims that Saladin hastily withdrew his troops from Masayaf because they were urgently needed to fend off a crusader force in the vicinity of Mount Lebanon. In reality, Saladin sought to form an alliance with Sinan and his assassins, consequently depriving the Crusaders of a potent ally against him. Viewing the expulsion of the Crusaders as a mutual benefit and priority, Saladin and Sinan maintained cooperative relations afterwards, the latter dispatching contingents of his forces to bolster Saladin's army in a number of decisive subsequent battlefronts. <laughs> Return to Cairo and forays in Palestine After leaving the Anusayariya Mountains, Saladin returned to Damascus and had his Syrian soldiers return home. He left Turan Shah in command of Syria and left for Egypt with only his personal followers, reaching Cairo on the 22nd of September. Having been absent roughly two years, he had much to organize and supervise in Egypt, namely fortifying and reconstructing Cairo. The city walls were repaired and their extensions laid out, while the construction of the Cairo citadel was commenced. The 280 feet 85 meters deep Bir Yusuf Joseph's well, was built on Saladin's orders. The chief public work he commissioned outside of Cairo was the large bridge at Giza, which was intended to form an outwork of defense against a potential Moorish invasion. Saladin remained in Cairo supervising its improvements, building colleges such as the Madrasa of the Sword Makers and ordering the internal administration of the country. In November 1177, he set out upon a raid into Palestine. The Crusaders had recently forayed into the territory of Damascus, so Saladin saw the truce as no longer worth preserving. The Christians sent a large portion of their army to besiege the fortress of Harem north of Aleppo, so southern Palestine bore few defenders. Saladin found the situation ripe and marched to Ascalon, which he referred to as the Bride of Syria. William of Tyre recorded that the Ayyubid army consisted of 26,000 soldiers, of which 8,000 were elite forces and 18,000 were black soldiers from Sudan. This army proceeded to raid the countryside, sack Ramla and Lod, and dispersed themselves as far as the gates of Jerusalem. <laughs> <laughs> Battles and truce with Baldwin The Ayyubids allowed King Baldwin to enter Ascalon with his Gaza-based Templars without taking any precautions against a sudden attack. Although the Crusader force consisted of only 375 knights, Saladin hesitated to ambush them because of the presence of highly skilled generals. On 25 November, while the greater part of the Ayyubid army was absent, Saladin and his men were surprised near Ramla in the Battle of Montgizard. Before they could form up, the Templar force hacked the Ayyubid army down. Initially, Saladin attempted to organize his men into battle order, but as his bodyguards were being killed, he saw that defeat was inevitable and so with a small remnant of his troops mounted a swift camel, riding all the way to the territories of Egypt. Not discouraged by his defeat at Tel Jezer, Saladin was prepared to fight the Crusaders once again. In the spring of 1178, he was encamped under the walls of Homs, and a few skirmishes occurred between his generals and the Crusader army. His forces in Hama won a victory over their enemy and brought the spoils, together with many prisoners of war, to Saladin who ordered the captives to be beheaded for "...plundering and laying waste the lands of the faithful." He spent the rest of the year in Syria without a confrontation with his enemies. Saladin's intelligence services reported to him that the Crusaders were planning a raid into Syria. 
He ordered one of his generals, Farak Shah, to guard the Damascus frontier with a thousand of his men to watch for an attack, then to retire, avoiding battle, and to light warning beacons on the hills, after which Saladin would march out. In April 1179, the Crusaders led by King Baldwin expected no resistance and waited to launch a surprise attack on Muslim herders grazing their herds and flocks east of the Golan Heights. Baldwin advanced too rashly in pursuit of Farak Shah's force, which was concentrated southeast of Kanitra and was subsequently defeated by the Ayyubids. With this victory, Saladin decided to call in more troops from Egypt. He requested Al Adil to dispatch 1,500 horsemen. In the summer of 1179, King Baldwin had set up an outpost on the road to Damascus and aimed to fortify a passage over the Jordan River, known as Jacob's Ford, that commanded the approach to the Banias Plain. The plain was divided by the Muslims and the Christians. Saladin had offered 100,000 gold pieces to Baldwin to abandon the project, which was particularly offensive to the Muslims, but to no avail. He then resolved to destroy the fortress, called Chastelet and manned by the Templars, moving his headquarters to Banias. As the Crusaders hurried down to attack the Muslim forces, they fell into disorder, with the infantry falling behind. Despite early success, they pursued the Muslims far enough to become scattered, and Saladin took advantage by rallying his troops and charged at the Crusaders. The engagement ended in a decisive Ayyubid victory, and many high-ranking knights were captured. Saladin then moved to besiege the fortress, which fell on 30 August 1179, in the spring of 1180. While Saladin was in the area of Safad, anxious to commence a vigorous campaign against the Kingdom of Jerusalem, King Baldwin sent messengers to him with proposals of peace. Because droughts and bad harvests hampered his commissariat, Saladin agreed to a truce. Raymond of Tripoli denounced the truce but was compelled to accept after an Ayyubid raid on his territory in May and upon the appearance of Saladin's naval fleet off the port of Tartus. <laughs> <laughs> Domestic affairs In June 1180, Saladin hosted a reception for Nur al-Din Muhammad, the Artuqid Emir of Kifa, at Geuk Su, in which he presented him and his brother Abu Bakr with gifts, valued at over 100,000 dinars according to Imad al-Din. This was intended to cement an alliance with the Artuqids and to impress other emirs in Mesopotamia and Anatolia. Previously, Saladin offered to mediate relations between Nur al-Din and Kilij Arslan II, the Seljuk Sultan of Rum, after the two came into conflict. The latter demanded that Nur al-Din return the lands given to him as a dowry for marrying his daughter when he received reports that she was being abused and used to gain Seljuk territory. Nur al-Din asked Saladin to mediate the issue, but Arslan refused. After Nur al-Din and Saladin met at Geuk Su, the top Seljuk emir, Iktiar al-Din al-Hasan, confirmed Arslan's submission, after which an agreement was drawn up. Saladin was later enraged when he received a message from Arslan accusing Nur al-Din of more abuses against his daughter. He threatened to attack the city of Malatya, saying, It is two days' march for me and I shall not dismount my horse until I am in the city. Alarmed at the threat, the Seljuks pushed for negotiations. Saladin felt that Arslan was correct to care for his daughter, but Nur al-Din had taken refuge with him, and therefore he could not betray his trust. It was finally agreed that Arslan's daughter would be sent away for a year and if Nur al-Din failed to comply, Saladin would move to abandon his support for him, leaving Farak Shah in charge of Syria. Saladin returned to Cairo at the beginning of 1181. According to Abu Shama, he intended to spend the fast of Ramadan in Egypt and then make the Hajj pilgrimage to Mecca in the summer. For an unknown reason he apparently changed his plans regarding the pilgrimage and was seen inspecting the Nile River banks in June. He was again embroiled with the Bedouin, he removed two-thirds of their fiefs to use as compensation for the fief holders at Fayyam. The Bedouin were also accused of trading with the Crusaders and, consequently, their grain was confiscated and they were forced to migrate westward. Later, Ayyubid warships were waged against Bedouin river pirates, who were plundering the shores of Lake Tanis. In the summer of 1181, Saladin's former palace administrator Kara Kush led a force to arrest Majd al-Din, a former deputy of Turan Shah in the Yemeni town of Zabid, while he was entertaining Imad ad-Din at his estate in Cairo. Saladin's intimates accused Majd al-Din of misappropriating the revenues of Zabid, but Saladin himself believed there was no evidence to back the allegations. He had Majd al-Din released in return for a payment of 80,000 dinars. 
In addition, other sums were to be paid to Saladin's brothers al Adil and Taj al Muluk Buri. The controversial detainment of Majd al Din was a part of the larger discontent associated with the aftermath of Turan Shah's departure from Yemen. Although his deputies continued to send him revenues from the province, centralized authority was lacking and internal quarrel arose between Is al Din Uthman of Aden and Hitton of Zabid. Saladin wrote in a letter to al Adil, This Yemen is a treasure house. We conquered it, but up to this day we have had no return and no advantage from it. There have been only innumerable expenses, the sending out of troops and expectations which did not produce what was hoped for in the end." <laughs> Imperial expansions <laughs> Conquest of Mesopotamian hinterland Saif al-Din had died earlier in June 1181 and his brother Is al-Din inherited leadership of Mosul. On 4 December, the crown prince of the Zenjids, as Salah, died in Aleppo. Prior to his death, he had his chief officers swear an oath of loyalty to Is al-Din, as he was the only Zenjid ruler strong enough to oppose Saladin. Is al-Din was welcomed in Aleppo, but possessing it and Mosul put too great of a strain on his abilities. He thus, handed Aleppo to his brother Imad al-Din Zangi, in exchange for Sinjar. Saladin offered no opposition to these transactions in order to respect the treaty he previously made with the Zenjids. On the 11th of May 1182, Saladin, along with half of the Egyptian Ayyubid army and numerous non-combatants, left Cairo for Syria. On the evening before he departed, he sat with his companions and the tutor of one of his sons quoted a line of poetry. Enjoy the scent of the ox eye plant of Najd, for after this evening it will come no more. Saladin took this as an evil omen and he never saw Egypt again. Knowing that Crusader forces were massed upon the frontier to intercept him, he took the desert route across the Sinai Peninsula to Isla at the head of the Gulf of Aqaba. Meeting no opposition, Saladin ravaged the countryside of Montreal, whilst Baldwin's forces watched on, refusing to intervene. He arrived in Damascus in June to learn that Farak Shah had attacked the Galilee, sacking De Berea and capturing Habas Jaildek, a fortress of great importance to the Crusaders. In July, Saladin dispatched Farak Shah to attack Kakab al-Hawa. Later, in August, the Ayyubids launched a naval and ground assault to capture Beirut. Saladin led his army in the Bekaa Valley. The assault was leaning towards failure and Saladin abandoned the operation to focus on issues in Mesopotamia. Kukberi Gokbori, the emir of Haran, invited Saladin to occupy the Jazeera region, making up northern Mesopotamia. He complied and the truce between him and the Zenjids officially ended in September 1182. Prior to his march to Jazeera, tensions had grown between the Zenjid rulers of the region, primarily concerning their unwillingness to pay deference to Mosul. Before he crossed the Euphrates, Saladin besieged Aleppo for three days, signaling that the truce was over. Once he reached Burra, near the river, he was joined by Kukberi and Nur al Din of Hisn Kaifa, and the combined forces captured the cities of Jazeera, one after the other. First, Edessa fell, followed by Saraj, then Raqqa, Kirkesia, and Nusaybin. Raqqa was an important crossing point and held by Qutb al Din Ainal, who had lost Manbij to Saladin in 1176. Upon seeing the large size of Saladin's army, he made little effort to resist and surrendered on the condition that he would retain his property. Saladin promptly impressed the inhabitants of the town by publishing a decree that ordered a number of taxes to be cancelled and erased all mention of them from treasury records, stating, The most miserable rulers are those whose purses are fat and their people thin. From Raqqa, he moved to conquer al Fudain, al Husayn, Maxim, Durain, Araban, and Khabar. All of which swore allegiance to him, Saladin proceeded to take Nusaybin, which offered no resistance. A medium sized town, Nusaybin, was not of great importance, but it was located in a strategic position between Mardin and Mosul and within easy reach of Diyarbakir. In the midst of these victories, Saladin received word that the Crusaders were raiding the villages of Damascus. He replied, Let them. Whilst they knock down villages, we are taking cities, when we come back, we shall have all the more strength to fight them." Meanwhile, in Aleppo, the emir of the city Zangi raided Saladin's cities to the north and east, such as Balis, Manbij, Saraj, Baza'a, al Karzin. He also destroyed his own citadel at Aziz to prevent it from being used by the Ayyubids if they were to conquer it. 
Topic: <laughs> Possession of Aleppo. Saladin turned his attention from Mosul to Aleppo, sending his brother Taj al-Muluk Buri to capture Tel Khalid, 130 kilometers northeast of the city. A siege was set, but the governor of Tel Khalid surrendered upon the arrival of Saladin himself on 17 May before a siege could take place. According to Imad ad-Din, after Tel Khalid, Saladin took a detour northwards to Ain Tab, but he gained possession of it when his army turned towards it, allowing to quickly move backward another sea. 100 kilometers towards Aleppo. On 21 May, he camped outside the city, positioning himself east of the citadel of Aleppo, while his forces encircles the suburb of Banakusa to the northeast and Bab Janin to the west. He stationed his men dangerously close to the city, hoping for an early success. Zangi did not offer long resistance. He was unpopular with his subjects and wished to return to his Sinjar, the city he governed previously. An exchange was negotiated where Zangi would hand over Aleppo to Saladin in return for the restoration of his control of Sinjar, Nusaybin, and Raqqa. Zangi would hold these territories as Saladin's vassals on terms of military service. On 12 June, Aleppo was formally placed in Ayyubid hands. The people of Aleppo had not known about these negotiations and were taken by surprise when Saladin's standard was hoisted over the citadel. Two emirs, including an old friend of Saladin, Is al-Din Jurdik, welcomed and pledged their service to him. Saladin replaced the Hanafi courts with Shafi'i administration, despite a promise he would not interfere in the religious leadership of the city. Although he was short of money, Saladin also allowed the departing Zangdi to take all the stores of the citadel that he could travel with and to sell the remainder—which Saladin purchased himself. In spite of his earlier hesitation to go through with the exchange, he had no doubts about his success, stating that Aleppo was the key to the lands, and this city is the eye of Syria and the citadel is its pupil. For Saladin, the capture of the city marked the end of over eight years of waiting since he told Farak Shah that, we have only to do the milking and Aleppo will be ours. After spending one night in Aleppo's citadel, Saladin marched to Harem, near the crusader held Antioch. The city was held by Sirhak, a minor Mamluk. Saladin offered him the city of Bushra and property in Damascus in exchange for Harem, but when Sirhak asked for more, his own garrison in Harem forced him out. He was arrested by Saladin's deputy Taki al-Din on allegations that he was planning to cede Harem to Bohemian III of Antioch. When Saladin received its surrender, he proceeded to arrange the defense of Harem from the Crusaders. He reported to the caliph and his own subordinates in Yemen and Baalbek that was going to attack the Armenians. Before he could move, however, there were a number of administrative details to be settled. Saladin agreed to a truce with Bohemond in return for Muslim prisoners being held by him and then he gave Aziz to Alam ad-Din Suleiman and Aleppo to Saif al-Din al-Yazkuj. The former was an emir of Aleppo who joined Saladin and the latter was a former Mamluk of Shirka who helped rescue him from the assassination attempt at Aziz. Fight for Mosul As Saladin approached Mosul, he faced the issue of taking over a large city and justifying the action. The Zenjids of Mosul appealed to a Nasir, the Abbasid Caliph at Baghdad whose vizier favored them. A Nasir sent Badr al-Badr a high-ranking religious figure to mediate between the two sides. Saladin arrived at the city on 10 November 1182. Is al-Din would not accept his terms because he considered them disingenuous and extensive, and Saladin immediately laid siege to the heavily fortified city. After several minor skirmishes and a stalemate in the siege that was initiated by the caliph, Saladin intended to find a way to withdraw without damage to his reputation while still keeping up some military pressure. He decided to attack Sinjar, which was held by Is al-Din's brother Sheriff al-Din. It fell after a 15-day siege on 30 December. Saladin's soldiers broke their discipline, plundering the city. Saladin only managed to protect the governor and his officers by sending them to Mosul. After establishing a garrison at Sinjar, he awaited a coalition assembled by Is al Din consisting of his forces, those from Aleppo, Mardin, and Armenia. Saladin and his army met the coalition at Haran in February 1183, but on hearing of his approach, the latter sent messengers to Saladin asking for peace. Each force returned to their cities and Al-Fadil wrote, They is al-Din's coalition advanced like men, like women they vanished. 
On 2 March, al Adil from Egypt wrote to Saladin that the Crusaders had struck the heart of Islam. Reynald de Schott alone had sent ships to the Gulf of Aqaba to raid towns and villages off the coast of the Red Sea. It was not an attempt to extend the Crusader influence into that sea or to capture its trade routes, but merely a piratical move. Nonetheless, Imad al-Din writes the raid was alarming to the Muslims because they were not accustomed to attacks on that sea, and Ibn al-Athir adds that the inhabitants had no experience with the Crusaders either as fighters or traitors. Ibn Jubair was told that 16 Muslim ships were burnt by the Crusaders, who then captured a pilgrim ship and caravan at Adab. He also reported that they intended to attack Medina and remove Muhammad's body. Al Makrizi added to the rumor by claiming Muhammad's tomb was going to be relocated to Crusader territory so Muslims would make pilgrimages there. Al Adil had his warships moved from Fustat and Alexandria to the Red Sea under the command of an Armenian mercenary Lulu. They broke the Crusader blockade, destroyed most of their ships, and pursued and captured those who anchored and fled into the desert. The surviving Crusaders, numbered at 170, were ordered to be killed by Saladin in various Muslim cities. From the point of view of Saladin, in terms of territory, the war against Mosul was going well, but he still failed to achieve his objectives and his army was shrinking. Taqi al Din took his men back to Hama, while Nasir al Din Muhammad and his forces had left. This encouraged Is al Din and his allies to take the offensive. The previous coalition regrouped at Harzim, some 140 kilometers from Haran. In early April, without waiting for Nasir al-Din, Saladin and Taqi al-Din commenced their advance against the coalition, marching eastward to Ras al-Ain unhindered. By late April, after three days of actual fighting, according to Saladin, the Ayyubids had captured Amid. He handed the city to Nur al-Din Muhammad together with its stores, which consisted of 80,000 candles, a tower full of arrowheads, and 1,040,000 books. In return for a diploma granting him the city, Nur al-Din swore allegiance to Saladin, promising to follow him in every expedition in the war against the Crusaders, and repairing damage done to the city. The fall of Amid, in addition to territory, convinced Il Ghazi of Mardin to enter the service of Saladin, weakening Is al-Din's coalition. Saladin attempted to gain the Caliph and Nasir's support against Is al-Din by sending him a letter requesting a document that would give him legal justification for taking over Mosul and its territories. Saladin aimed to persuade the caliph claiming that while he conquered Egypt and Yemen under the flag of the Abbasids, the Zenjids of Mosul openly supported the Seljuks rivals of the caliphate and only came to the caliph when in need. He also accused Is al-Din's forces of disrupting the Muslim holy war against the Crusaders, stating, They are not content not to fight, but they prevent those who can. Saladin defended his own conduct claiming that he had come to Syria to fight the Crusaders, end the heresy of the assassins, and stop the wrongdoing of the Muslims. He also promised that if Mosul was given to him, it would lead to the capture of Jerusalem, Constantinople, Georgia, and the lands of the Almohads in the Maghreb. Until the word of God is supreme and the Abbasid Caliphate has wiped the world clean, turning the churches into mosques. Saladin stressed that all this would happen by the will of God, and instead of asking for financial or military support from the caliph, he would capture and give the caliph the territories of Tikrit, Takuk, Khuzestan, Kish Island, and Oman. Topic. Wars against Crusaders On 29 September 1182, Saladin crossed the Jordan River to attack Basin, which was found to be empty. The next day his forces sacked and burned the town and moved westwards. They intercepted crusader reinforcements from Karak and Shabak along the Nablus road and took a number of prisoners. Meanwhile, the main crusader force under Guy of Lusignan moved from Sepphoris to Al-Fula. Saladin sent out 500 skirmishers to harass their forces, and he himself marched to Ain Jalut. When the crusader force, reckoned to be the largest the kingdom ever produced from its own resources, but still outmatched by the Muslims. Advanced, the Ayyubids unexpectedly moved down the stream of Ain Jalut. After a few Ayyubid raids, including attacks on Zaran, Forbalit, and Mount Tabor, the Crusaders still were not tempted to attack their main force, and Saladin led his men back across the river once provisions and supplies ran low. Crusader attacks provoked further responses by Saladin. Reynald of Shot alone, in particular, harassed Muslim trading and pilgrimage routes with a fleet on the Red Sea, a water route that Saladin needed to keep open. 
In response, Saladin built a fleet of 30 galleys to attack Beirut in 1182. Reynold threatened to attack the holy cities of Mecca and Medina. In retaliation, Saladin twice besieged Curic, Reynold's fortress in Ultrajordane, in 1183 and 1184. Reynold responded by looting a caravan of pilgrims on the Hajj in 1185. According to the later 13th century Old French continuation of William of Tyre, Reynold captured Saladin's sister in a raid on a caravan. This claim is not attested in contemporary sources, Muslim or Frankish, however, instead stating that Reynold had attacked a preceding caravan, and Saladin set guards to ensure the safety of his sister and her son, who came to no harm. Following the failure of his Curic sieges, Saladin temporarily turned his attention back to another long term project and resumed attacks on the territory of Is ad Din. Yud ibn Madid ibn Zangi, around Mosul, which he had begun with some success in 1182. However, since then, Mas Yud had allied himself with the powerful governor of Azerbaijan and Jaibal, who in 1185 began moving his troops across the Zagros Mountains, causing Saladin to hesitate in his attacks. The defenders of Mosul, when they became aware that help was on the way, increased their efforts, and Saladin subsequently fell ill, so in March 1186 a peace treaty was signed. In July 1187, Saladin captured most of the Kingdom of Jerusalem. On 4 July 1187, at the Battle of Hatton, he faced the combined forces of Guy of Lusignan, King Consort of Jerusalem, and Raymond III of Tripoli. In this battle alone, the Crusader force was largely annihilated by Saladin's determined army. It was a major disaster for the Crusaders and a turning point in the history of the Crusades. Saladin captured Reynold and was personally responsible for his execution in retaliation for his attacks against Muslim caravans. The members of these caravans had, in vain, besought his mercy by reciting the truce between the Muslims and the Crusaders, but Reynold ignored this and insulted the Islamic prophet, Muhammad, before murdering and torturing a number of them. Upon hearing this, Saladin swore an oath to personally execute Reynold. Guy of Lusignan was also captured. Seeing the execution of Reynold, he feared he would be next. However, his life was spared by Saladin, who said of Reynold, "'It is not the want of kings, to kill kings, but that man had transgressed all bounds, and therefore did I treat him thus." Topic. Capture of Jerusalem. Saladin had captured almost every crusader city. Saladin preferred to take Jerusalem without bloodshed and offered generous terms, but those inside refused to leave their holy city, vowing to destroy it in a fight to the death rather than see it handed over peacefully. Jerusalem capitulated to his forces on Friday 2 October 1187, after a siege. When the siege had started, Saladin was unwilling to promise terms of quarter to the Frankish inhabitants of Jerusalem. Balian of Ibelin threatened to kill every Muslim hostage, estimated at 5,000, and to destroy Islam's holy shrines of the Dome of the Rock and the Al-Aqsa Mosque if such quarter were not provided. Saladin consulted his council and the terms were accepted. The agreement was read out through the streets of Jerusalem so that everyone might within 40 days provide for himself and pay to Saladin the agreed tribute for his freedom. An unusually low ransom for the times around $50 today was to be paid for each franc in the city, whether man, woman, or child, but Saladin, against the wishes of his treasurers, allowed many families who could not afford the ransom to leave. Patriarch Heraclius of Jerusalem organized and contributed to a collection that paid the ransoms for about 18,000 of the poorer citizens, leaving another 15,000 to be enslaved. Saladin's brother al Adil asked Saladin for a thousand of them for his own use and then released them on the spot. Most of the foot soldiers were sold into slavery. Upon the capture of Jerusalem, Saladin summoned the Jews and permitted them to resettle in the city. In particular, the residents of Ashkelon, a large Jewish settlement, responded to his request. The subject ordered the churches repurposed as horse stables and the church towers destroyed. Tyre, on the coast of modern day Lebanon, was the last major crusader city that was not captured by Muslim forces. Strategically, it would have made more sense for Saladin to capture Tyre before Jerusalem. Saladin, however, chose to pursue Jerusalem first because of the importance of the city to Islam. Tyre was commanded by Conrad of Montferrat, who strengthened its defenses and withstood two sieges by Saladin. In 1188, at Tortosa, Saladin released Guy of Lusignan and returned him to his wife, Queen Sibylla of Jerusalem. They went first to Tripoli, then to Antioch. 
In 1189, they sought to reclaim Tyre for their kingdom but were refused admission by Conrad, who did not recognize Guy as king. Guy then set about besieging Acre. Saladin was on friendly terms with Queen Tamar of Georgia. Saladin's biographer Baha ad Din ibn Sadad reports that, after Saladin's conquest of Jerusalem, the Georgian queen sent envoys to the Sultan to request the return of confiscated possessions of the Georgian monasteries in Jerusalem. Saladin's response is not recorded, but the Queen's efforts seem to have been successful as Jacques de Vitry, the Bishop of Acre, reports the Georgians were, in contrast to the other Christian pilgrims, allowed a free passage into the city with their banners unfurled. Ibn Sadad furthermore claims that Queen Tamar outbid the Byzantine Emperor in her efforts to obtain the relics of the True Cross, offering 200,000 gold pieces to Saladin who had taken the relics as booty at the Battle of Hatton, but to no avail. Third Crusade Hatton and the fall of Jerusalem prompted the Third Crusade 1189 financed in England by a special Saladin tithe. Richard the Lionheart, King of England led Guy's siege of Acre, conquered the city and executed 3,000 Muslim prisoners, including women and children. Baha ad Din wrote, the motives of this massacre are differently told. According to some, the captives were slain by way of reprisal for the death of those Christians whom the Muslims had slain. Others again say that the King of England, on deciding to attempt the conquest of Ascalon, thought it unwise to leave so many prisoners in the town after his departure. God alone knows what the real reason was. The armies of Saladin engaged in combat with the army of King Richard at the Battle of Arsif on 7 September 1191, at which Saladin's forces suffered heavy losses and were forced to withdraw. After the Battle of Arsif, Richard occupied Jaffa, restoring the city's fortifications. Meanwhile, Saladin moved south, where he dismantled the fortifications of Ascalon to prevent this strategically important city, which lay at the junction between Egypt and Palestine, from falling into Crusader hands. In October 1191, Richard began restoring the inland castles on the coastal plain beyond Jaffa in preparation for an advance on Jerusalem. During this period, Richard and Saladin passed envoys back and forth, negotiating the possibility of a truce. Richard proposed that his sister, Joan of England, Queen of Sicily, should marry Saladin's brother and that Jerusalem could be their wedding gift. However, Saladin rejected this idea when Richard insisted that Saladin's brother convert to Christianity. In January 1192, Richard's army occupied Beit Nuba, just 12 miles from Jerusalem, but withdrew without attacking the holy city. Instead, Richard advanced south on Ascalon, where he restored the fortifications. In July 1192, Saladin tried to threaten Richard's command of the coast by attacking Jaffa. The city was besieged, and Saladin very nearly captured it, however, Richard arrived a few days later and defeated Saladin's army in a battle outside the city. The Battle of Jaffa 1192 proved to be the last military engagement of the Third Crusade. After Richard reoccupied Jaffa and restored its fortifications, he and Saladin again discussed terms. At last Richard agreed to demolish the fortifications of Ascalon, while Saladin agreed to recognize crusader control of the Palestinian coast from Tyre to Jaffa. The Christians would be allowed to travel as unarmed pilgrims to Jerusalem, and Saladin's kingdom would be at peace with the crusader states for the following three years. <laughs> Death Saladin died of a fever on 4 March 1193, at Damascus, not long after King Richard's departure. In Saladin's possession at the time of his death were one piece of gold and forty pieces of silver. He had given away his great wealth to his poor subjects, leaving nothing to pay for his funeral. He was buried in a mausoleum in the garden outside the Umayyad Mosque in Damascus, Syria. Seven centuries later, Emperor Wilhelm II of Germany donated a new marble sarcophagus to the mausoleum. However, the original sarcophagus was not replaced, instead, the mausoleum, which is open to visitors, now has two sarcophagi, the marble one placed on the side and the original wooden one, which covers Saladin's tomb. Muslims are buried in a simple shroud, so if there are any sarcophagi present, they are usually used for covering the top of the Islamic burials. Family Imad ad-Din al-Isfahani compiled a list of Saladin's sons along with their dates of birth, according to information provided by Saladin late in his reign. They were 
Alif Dal Nur al Din Ali, b. 1 Shawal 565 Ah, c. the 25th of June 1170 in Egypt. Al Aziz Imad al Din Abu al Fath Uthman, b. 8 Jumada I 567 Ah, c. the 14th of January 1172 in Egypt. Al Zafir Muzaffar al Din Abu al Abbas Khidr, b. 5 Shaban 568 Ah, c. 29 March 1173 in Egypt. Al Zahir Jiyath al Din Abu Mansur Ghazi, b. Mid Ramadan 568 Ah, May 1173 in Egypt. Al Mu'is Fath al Din Abu Yaqub Ishaq, b. Rabi I 570 Ah, October November 1174 in Egypt. Al Mu'ayyid Najm al Din Abu al Fath Masid, b. Rabi I 571 Ah, September October 1175 in Damascus. Al Ais Sheriff Al Din Abu Yusuf Yaqub B. Rabi II 572 A October November 1176 in Egypt. Al Zahir Mujir Al Din Abu Sulaiman Dawud B. Dhi Al Kida 573 A May 1178 in Egypt. Al Mufadil Qutb Al Din Musa later called Al Muzaffar B. 573 A 1178 in Egypt. Al Ashraf is Al Din Abu Abd Allah Muhammad b. 575 A 1179 1180 in Sham. Al Musan Zahir Al Din Abu Al Abbas Ahmad b. Rabi I 577 A July August 1181 in Egypt. Al Muazzam Fakir Al Din Abu Mansur Tarancha b. Rabi I 577 A July August 1181 in Egypt. Al Jawad Rukan Al Din Abu Said Ayyub B. Rabi I 578 A July August 1182. Al Ghalib Nasir Al Din Abu Al Fath Maliksha B. Rajab 578 A November December 1182. Al Mansur Abu Bakr B. After Saladin's death 1193 in Haran. The sons who were full brothers were Alif Dal Al Zafir and Al Mafadil. Al Aziz, Al Mu'ayyid, and Al Ais. Al Zahir and Al Zahir. Al Mu'is and Al Jawad. Al Ashraf and Al Musan. Al Mu'azzam, Al Ghalib, and Al Mansur. The sons listed by Imad number 15, but elsewhere he writes that Saladin was survived by 17 sons and one daughter. According to Abu Hama, Imad missed two sons who were born to slave women, Imad al Din Shadi and Nusrat al Din Marwan. As for Saladin's daughter, she was Munisa Khatan, she married her cousin al Kamil Muhammad ibn Adil. Saladin also had other children who died before him, such as al Mansur Hassan and Ahmad. Al Zahir Dawud, whom Imad listed eighth, is recorded as being his twelfth son in a letter written by Saladin's minister. Not much is known of Saladin's wives or slave women. He married Ismat al Din Khatan, the widow of Nur al Din Zenji, in 1176. She did not have children. One of his wives, Shamsa, is buried with her son Al-Aziz in the tomb of Al-Shafi'i. <inaudible> Recognition and legacy <inaudible> <inaudible> Western world Saladin eventually achieved a great reputation in Europe as a chivalrous knight, due to his fierce struggle against the Crusaders and his generosity. In the Divine Comedy he is mentioned as one of the virtuous non-Christians in Limbo. Although Saladin faded into history after the Middle Ages, he appears in a sympathetic light in Gotthold Ephraim Lessing's play Nathan the Wise and in Sir Walter Scott's novel The Talisman 1825. The contemporary view of Saladin originates mainly from these texts. According to Jonathan Riley Smith, Scott's portrayal of Saladin was that of a modern 19th century liberal European gentleman, beside whom medieval Westerners would always have made a poor showing." Despite the Crusaders' slaughter when they originally conquered Jerusalem in 1099, Saladin granted amnesty and free passage to all common Catholics and even to the defeated Christian army, as long as they were able to pay the aforementioned ransom the Greek Orthodox Christians were treated even better, because they often opposed the Western Crusaders. Notwithstanding the differences in beliefs, the Muslim Saladin was respected by Christian lords, Richard especially. 
Richard once praised Saladin as a great prince, saying that he was without doubt the greatest and most powerful leader in the Islamic world. Saladin in turn stated that there was not a more honorable Christian lord than Richard. After the treaty, Saladin and Richard sent each other many gifts as tokens of respect but never met face to face. In April 1191, a Frankish woman's three-month-old baby had been stolen from her camp and sold on the market. The Franks urged her to approach Saladin herself with her grievance. According to Baha al-Din, Saladin used his own money to buy the child back. He gave it to the mother and she took it, with tears streaming down her face, and hugged the baby to her chest. The people were watching her and weeping and I Ibn Shaddad was standing amongst them. She suckled it for some time and then Saladin ordered a horse to be fetched for her and she went back to camp. Topic. Muslim world In 1898, German Emperor Wilhelm II visited Saladin's tomb to pay his respects. The visit, coupled with anti-imperialist sentiments, led nationalist Arabs to reinvent the image of Saladin and portray him as a hero of the struggle against the West. The image of Saladin they used was the romantic one created by Walter Scott and other Europeans in the West at the time. It replaced Saladin's reputation as a figure who had been largely forgotten in the Muslim world, eclipsed by more successful figures, such as Baybars of Egypt. Modern Arab states have sought to commemorate Saladin through various measures, often based on the image created of him in the 19th century West. A governorate centered around Tikrit and Samarra in modern day Iraq, Salah ad Din Governorate, is named after him, as is Salahaddin University in Erbil, the largest city of Iraqi Kurdistan. A suburban community of Erbil, Massif Salahaddin, is also named after him. Few structures associated with Saladin survive within modern cities. Saladin first fortified the citadel of Cairo 1175 which had been a domed pleasure pavilion with a fine view in more peaceful times. In Syria, even the smallest city is centered on a defensible citadel, and Saladin introduced this essential feature to Egypt. Although the Ayyubid dynasty that he founded would only outlive him by 57 years, the legacy of Saladin within the Arab world continues to this day. With the rise of Arab nationalism in the 20th century, particularly with regard to the Arab-Israeli conflict, Saladin's heroism and leadership gained a new significance. Saladin's recapture of Palestine from the European Crusaders is considered an inspiration for modern-day Arabs' opposition to Zionism. Moreover, the glory and comparative unity of the Arab world under Saladin was seen as the perfect symbol for the new unity sought by Arab nationalists, such as Gamal Abdel Nasser. For this reason, the eagle of Saladin became the symbol of revolutionary Egypt, and was subsequently adopted by several other Arab states the United Arab Republic, Iraq, Libya, the State of Palestine, and Yemen. Topic see also List of Kurdish dynasties and countries Sheriff Khan Bidlizi List of rulers of Damascus List of rulers of Egypt Kingdom of Heaven The Crusades Saladin, the animated series Saladin The Victorious Salah al-Din TV series Arn, the Knight Templar Topic References Topic Bibliography Topic Primary Sources Baha al-Din ibn Shaddad 2002. The Rare and Excellent History of Saladin. Ashgate. ISBN 978-0-7546-3381-5. Imad ad-Din al-Isfahani C. Landberg, ed. Conquite de la Syrie et de la Palestine par Salah ed-Din in French. Brill. Topic secondary sources Bosworth, Clifford Mach Mid. In Van Donzel, E. Heinrichs, W. P. Pellet, C. H. The Encyclopedia of Islam. V. E. J. Brill. ISBN 90-04-08112-7. Retrieved 18 May 2008. Ede, Anne-Marie Saladin. T. R. Todd, Jane Marie. London, Harvard University Press. ISBN 978-0-674-05559-9. Gabrielli, Francesco, Costello, E. J. Arab Historians of the Crusades. London, Routledge and Keegan. p. 362. ISBN 978-0-7102-0235-2. Gillingham, John Richard I Yale English Monarchs. New Haven, Yale University Press. p. 378. ISBN 978-0-300-07912-8. 
Grousset, René The Epic of the Crusades. T.R. Lindsay, Noel. New York, Orion Press. Lane Poole, Stanley Saladin and the Fall of the Kingdom of Jerusalem. Heroes of the Nations. London, G. P. Putnam's Sons. Retrieved 26 March 2014. Lyons, M. C., Jackson, D. E. P. Saladin, The Politics of the Holy War. Cambridge University Press. ISBN 978-0-521-31739-9. Retrieved 26 March 2014. Minorsky, Vladimir Studies in Caucasian History. London, Cambridge University Press. Nicole, David Saladin, The Background, Strategies, Tactics and Battlefield Experiences of the Greatest Commanders of History. Osprey Publishing. ISBN 1849083177. Retrieved 26 March 2014. Rossoff, David Lenis, Eli, ed. Where Heaven Touches Earth, Jewish Life in Jerusalem from Medieval Times to the Present. Jerusalem, Guardian. ISBN 978-0-87306-879-6. Runciman, Stephen A History of the Crusades, The Kingdom of Jerusalem and the Frankish East 1100-1187, 2 2nd ed. London, Penguin. ISBN 978-0-14-013704-0. Ter Gevendian, Aram N. Arabakan Amirayutian or Bagratuniak Hyastanum The Arab Emirates in Bagratuni Armenia in Armenian. Yerevan, Armenian Academy of Sciences. Topic further reading Gibb, H.A.R. 1973. The Life of Saladin, from the works of Imad ad-Din and Baha ad-Din. Clarendon Press. ISBN 978-0-86356-928-9. OCLC 674160. Hindley, Jeffrey Saladin, Hero of Islam. Pen and Sword. ISBN 1-84415-499-8. OCLC 72868777. Hussain, Shanaz 1998. Muslim Heroes of the Crusades, Salahuddin and Nuruddin. London, Taha. ISBN 978-1-897940-71-6. OCLC 40928075. Reston Jr., James 2001. Warriors of God, Richard the Lionheart and Saladin in the Third Crusade. New York, Anchor Books. ISBN 0-385-49562-5. OCLC 45283102. Scharfstein, Saul, Gelibert, Dorcas Chronicle of Jewish History, From the Patriarchs to the 21st Century. Hoboken, NJ, KTAV Pub. House. ISBN 0-88125-606-4. OCLC 38174402. External links Stanley Lane Poole, The Life of Saladin and the Fall of the Kingdom of Jerusalem, in BTM format Rosebow Ch. J. Saladin. Prince of Chivalry de Expugnatione Terre Sancte per Saladinum A European Account of Saladin's Conquests of the Crusader States. In Latin, Saladin, The Sultan and His Times, 1138-1193. Richard and Saladin, Warriors of the Third Crusade